Excuse the fluffy hair. I just got out of the shower and figured, why do something with it? Might as well let it rock out with its flops out. Gonna crack on straight into the video. We're gonna talk about the rise and fall of booty builders. And for most of you, or many of you at least, that's probably how you got to know TFNL and the brand through booty building or the rivalry between TFNL and booty building. So I'm gonna ask you to come with me on a journey. You're gonna close your eyes, you're gonna listen to a story I'm about to tell. The year is 2014. Gymshark are making early moves into the fitness scene and your body power dreams consist of you meeting your favorite YouTube vlogger and featuring in the background of their 2014 body power vlog recorded with a Sony Handycam. Ogus and Lovado are making memes about g p and half natties. Fake natty videos are swarming the internet and Jason Blaha's crying about Mike O'Hearn. Shortly after, things begin to change and booty builders boom onto the scene. Grace Fit, Whitney Simmons and Nikki Blackter are rising through the ranks and your YouTube feed changes drastically. What was once filled with If It Fits Your Macros and Scott Herman Fitness is now filled with cable kickbacks and booty bands. Fitness as we knew it had changed and we questioned whether things would ever be the same again. Fast forward a few years, 2017 hits. The problem with Gymshark was released and TFNL boom onto the scene as the biggest channel the UK fitness scene had ever seen. TFNL start a war with booty builders who are dishing out awful information and dreadful cable kickback tutorials. 2018 comes and the problem with booty builder video is released, which contributes to starting the greatest rivalry the UK fitness industry had ever seen, be that TFNL versus Gracefit UK. 2018 comes to a close and things begin to slow. No one really knows why, but we all, have our, we all have our questions. Booty builders become a bit of a dying breed and no one's really ready to accept it, especially not me, and no one really knew why. Grace Fit later became Grace Beverly, and Gymshark started rivaling mainstream brands. Body Power became a display of sales rather than a display of personalities, and more useless information swept across the YouTube scene, consuming booty builders as we knew them. So what happened? I think the thing is, like any trend, it kind of lingered in the background and then boomed as Gymshark boomed, which then kind of started this snowball effect of these kind of videos and I guess sub trends that came from booty building, which ultimately contributed to the fitness industry we've known for the last few years. But the harsh reality is YouTube fitness is dying. If you look around at all your favorite YouTube fitness vloggers that you used to watch five years ago, people who were once exposed to millions are now barely being exposed to thousands. Millions of followers, equates to only a few thousand views. And the harsh reality is people lose interest. Trends die out, things move on, and things get boring. And that's probably one of the hardest things to accept with trends, is that people who have built their name and their brand on this singular trend being booty building, don't really have anywhere to go. Granted, a few are still prominent on the scene, like Whitney Simmons does bits, Grace Fit has left, left us behind and completely ruined our rivalry before we even got to meet and have a chat about things. And that left TFNL in a bit of a rut, to be honest. The brand was kind of built on those types of videos, debunking poor information and bad content produced by booty builders just for the sake of their views. People were posting stuff that, did, that looked good, but didn't actually yield great results. And as I'm sure you're aware, as I'm sure you're still probably seeing, half of your Instagram feed is probably full of people trying to be wannabe booty builders and giving out the same useless information the big time booty builders were giving out a few years ago. They're now just recycling and regurgitating what we already know not to be true. I mean, no, cable kickbacks are not a very effective way of building the body. Squats are quite effective, yes, but are they the most effective? Probably not. One would argue that something like a glute bridge may actually be more effective than squats. Again, depend on the individual. But things like booty band cable kickbacks don't really have a mass place in any program unless building the booty is your sole goal. Nice rhyme. I should study English. I think what's really happened is this. People saw somebody do something, such as Nicky Blackter, people of a similar stature thought, I could do that too. Maybe not as good or maybe better, who knows? And they jumped on the bandwagon, which then led to that multiplying effect in which one would turn into two, which would turn into four, which would turn into eight. And that's ultimately how the fitness industry was consumed by booty builders. As with anything, people are no longer relevant. People lose interest themselves, their viewers lose interest, and then eight turns into four, which turns into two. And it's hard to accept that the names you once loved aren't gonna be around forever or the names you once loved are no longer around. And because YouTube fitness was so dominated by booty builders and booty building videos, it's kind of a bit of a desert island now, in the sense that there's not really a lot of great content, which then led to a lot of other influencers dying out too, because they lost content ideas. And now whatever is sweeping over the fitness industry now is nowhere near as prominent or memorable as booty building is or was. 
Again, do I think this is a permanent thing? No, I think this is a temporary blip the fitness industry is seeing. I think realistically, as with booty building, another trend will arise. And when that trend does, content will boom again, I hope. Not just from me, but for other channels. And you can see, is this content worth capitalizing on in the sense that are they producing information that is potentially dangerous and harmful? Yes. Is there now a gap in the market for somebody to correct this information and bring a bit more safety and eliminate the BS around the industry once again? Yes. Does that mean I'm ever gonna stop creating videos? Absolutely not. I'm here, I'm lingering. I'm not quite V-shred lingering, but I'm, I'm here nonetheless. TFNO isn't so much herpes. TFNO is more of an annoying rash that you can't seem to get rid of, but you do love to scratch. If booty building is your primary goal, go for it. Do what makes you happy. Be sure you're doing it safely and effectively, optimizing your training if you so wish, but also enjoying your training. But don't try and preach BS information onto others. Just because you saw your favorite booty builder from 2014 do it, doesn't mean it's relevant and effective now. Things change, people learn. Do I see YouTube fitness, especially in the UK, ever being as good as it once was? I'm doubtful. Back in its prime when I was going to body power in a Schmedium t-shirt, everything was bless. I was rocking the 14 inch arms, I was feeling hella swole. Walking around trying to rival Rich Piana, shaking his hands, it felt like clouds, RIP. Featuring in the background of one of Ogus's vlogs, Try and find it and I'll give you nothing. Things were good, things were consistent, and things were enjoyable because they were kind of new. Eventually new turns into old and it's not that fun anymore. When things are new, they're exciting. When things have been around for five or six years, they're kind of a bit boring and people get complacent, which I think is what has happened with the industry. I do think booty building is a trend that will linger forever because ultimately it's got a lot of people from doing nothing into the gym, which I respect and I appreciate. But it's also got a lot of people to understand that maybe training for strength or just purely full body hypertrophy isn't necessarily for them. And now booty building has given them that avenue to isolate or focus their training into something that they perhaps enjoy. Although it's not something I would do personally, as you can tell from my dead glutes, it's clearly getting them off the sofa and involved in a more active lifestyle, which can't really be faulted, but the information that's been produced in the past can be. The purpose of this video is still unknown. It's an observation I made, it's a video I wanted to make. I'm not gonna put a light goal on it because realistically, you probably won't see another one like this again, unless you really do appreciate my two cents, in which case I might slap it out there. But if you made it this far through the video and tolerated my waffling for the last probably six to 10 minutes, I appreciate you for doing so. And over the next few weeks, we'll be ramping up the source levels, bringing, uh, I would say, borderline spice to the industry again. Uh, which is something I've been tickling for a while and something that might actually become a reality. Just let me know who you want me to source, let me know who you want me to spice, and that can be done. Like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Doing so does help me a lot and I do appreciate it. Nonetheless, thank you for tolerating the video.